all of Jenny. So I, I, I didn't even watch better. all of my friends. <laughs> okay. I haven't gotten to the Ted Lasso episode where Andrea plays his ex-wife. Like that's how bad of a friend I am. And that's in the- I haven't watched half the movies that Sarah's yeah. been in. I need to watch them. Wait, hang on. Okay, hang on. She's in like the third episode of Ted oh, Lasso. she's in the fifth one. I watched through the third one. I'm going to go back to it. I'm going to binge it. How, okay, how did you not watch both seasons <laughs> twice now? I, I, I'm not kidding. Have I, it, you watched We Crashed yet? We Crashed. Uh, about with Jared Leto, about the WeWork guy? I, I have a good reason as why as to why we haven't You're going to love it. You're going to love it. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm going to watch Ted Lasso. I just... All right, let me tell you why we haven't watched We Crashed yet. It's on our list. Kristen has a new thing out that is getting rave reviews. It's great. I started that one. So that's okay. why I'm not watching anything else, because I started that with Gary Oldman, with right. Goldman. I, I, I said to Serena. It's great. Yeah, I said, Serena. What's it called? Call, slow ponies or something? Slow horses. Slow horses. I, I said, Serena, call Kristen. Tell him we loved it, you know. Because you, you know, when, when it's your sister, you forget, right? Yeah. And it's just not right. Oh no, you have and you you have to. It's this nice thing is so good. It, the the writing is so good. Yeah, and I said, call everything Kristen. about it's great. The acting, the story, an incredible everything. Incredible job and the whole thing. And um, Kristen goes, oh yeah, we're working on the second. You know, so it's like a series. They're going to do more of them. Oh good. So, yeah, yeah. I, I was like, yes. Whoever. I'm about tired of these shows that are limited series and you're like so into it. And then they're like, well, we're done. They're gone. I was like, so, figure it out. Figure something else out. Yeah, I need to watch doing, more. Um, they're doing another one. Uh, yeah, another yeah. Slow Horses is going to be a, a different theme. You know, they're going to have to pick a new theme every time. Gary Oldman is amazing. He's Kristen is amazing. Uh, the young actor that was like kind of the lead guy, the lead slow horse. Yeah. Unbelievable. He, yeah. he really makes it. You know, he carries it. But anytime, anytime Gary Oldman is on the screen, it's just he sucks all the oxygen, everything. You can't stop watching this man yeah. as he gets older. Kristen is the same way. Yeah, they're you know, both. They're both. Honestly, it's like it's how I feel. There are very few actors. It's like a handful of actors and both of them are like it's like a acting class master class. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you yeah, watch and, them, and like, oh, way, they're yeah. really good at their craft. Um, they both uh, Gary and Kristen did the movie about um, Churchill, where he was That's Churchill right. and she was Churchill's wife. So they've worked together before, you know, yeah. and, and before that. And I don't know if you, you know, you probably know this because of many. Everybody in England, like it's a small acting. Yeah, they all know each other. They all know each other. They, they do theater together. They do everything. I don't think people realize how much they all do mm -hmm. together. Yeah. So it's a small um, community. By the way, I talked to Minnie and she's going to come on the podcast because her book has just come out, her memoir, which is freaking fantastic. Cool. And by the way, I feel like Andrea and I need credit for that because we've been telling her for years, you need to write a book because your stories are insane. She has insane stories. I'm sure not all of them made it in. God, I wish I could <laughs> reveal some of her stories, but she she's going to come on and or, give, give me an idea. No, 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 she just has like, she's just one of those people. You know how there's those people that have just have crazy shit happen to them. Yeah, Good yeah. and bad. She just has right. a really extraordinary big life. You look, I mean, when you not everybody has that kind of a life, you know what I mean? But look, I, you look at someone like that and you go, OK, when Dean Laurie started saying to me, we need to write your story. I kept saying, I, I don't have a story. Right. Uh, there's right. No, because I'm just a guy. I'm, I'm this kid that literally, you know, born on a bayou in a shotgun shack. You know, that that's and somehow made it to the top of the Hollywood trainers, you know, like right. the guy you call. Right. And he we thought that was going to be the story. It's like, that's the story. He goes, do you understand that doesn't happen? You don't happen in life. Right. right. right? And so if my story can capture people's you know, imagination, someone like many driver is it's got to be an incredible is it out yet is the book it out? is the book the book came out a couple days ago i just got my copy yesterday so i'm gonna, on I already started reading can I, can I listen oh yeah oh yeah and her voice i mean come on oh wait oh she's doing it yeah um what's what's it called i want to get it um hold on i literally 
Uh, it, I, I'll put oh you on the God. Sp- I'm sorry. I, I know. I, I know what it is, too. And this is this is what I hate about getting older is that but I you see on people will say to me, uh, so Vinny, what's your book called? And I'll go, Bob, I'm angry. Not, uh, <laughs> Hold on. I just managing expectations, managing expectations. So plug for Minnie's book It is great. I started reading it already. But also, too, it's also fun to read because she is a good writer. She has a great podcast. She's just a, one of those good conversationalists. She can talk to anybody, you know. You know, there's some people in Hollywood that you can't talk to who you, mm-hmm. you get the vibe, stay away from them. And she's very like, she likes well, talking. Listen, to people. She was she was all over some of this. Yeah, she was. Did she know that I'm down to the two balls? Did you tell her? I I haven't. We haven't discussed it yet, but yeah. Don't worry. Um, maybe I'll let you have that big reveal. Yeah, on the, show, on the show. The last time she was on the show, we told her that I have the three. And you know what? She's going to come on the show and I'm going to mention that to her. You're going to have to tell her off the air. Many listen, I know you have. <laughs> you don't, no you don't think she remembers talking. that that really exciting detail. I don't think she remembers that. Uh, you have to like remind, like pretend, okay. pretend on the show. You remember this. Right. Yeah. Like you d- like how they prep you for Conan. Yeah. Like yeah. that. Yeah. Give okay. her a little prep. I will. And, um, but yeah, she she was there when we gave it a name. Guam. She was Guam. there at the nascence of Guam. Mm. Um, right. <clears throat> so, I sent you a link. Uh, where? In your text. Did you get it about something called keto chow? I didn't go super down the rabbit hole, but it already looked crazy. And it it was one of those things that like gave me diarrhea while reading it. Like it was that I was like, what is happening with keto chow? Keto chow. So what is keto chow? OK, well, this, by the way, because we do this, you guys, you don't know, you, you, if you haven't been listening, days, to- is it 100 days of keto chow? Yes. OK. All right. So, yeah, I have it here. I haven't seen. OK, it. I'm going to open it, too. But <clears throat> if you guys haven't been listening, I did a segment on the show for a little while, maybe about a year ago, I was doing this of different diets and weight loss programs and pills and potions and whatever, you name it, uh, supplements that were in my Instagram feed. Right. Because I'm always like, what is this? What is this? And it started off with things that you've heard of, like Noom. And then it was like random shit, like Zoe or Amplified, or like they were always like some weird one word quirk, you know? Okay, so and, this is uh, so we're getting so this one came up here, and then right? I would do a quiz with Vinny and I would say, that, is this real or is this fake? And he would have to decide. Now, this one was just so crazy. So this guy has a thing called keto chow, and I don't even know what it is, but it looks like it's just keto processed keto stuff. I'm, not, I'm afraid to open it. So shop. You see, we're giving this guy a free plug and that, that kind of I don't bump. think we are. And here's why, because. It's processed like protein. Pot. And by the way, this is I, I'm let this dovetail into the moment we hung up with our IG live. Somebody asked, what about protein powders? And I feel like that might be at least today, the number one question that we get about NSNG. What about protein powders? Because we have somehow been convinced. When did it happen, Vinny, in society that we were convinced that the healthiest thing that you could eat is a protein shake? How when when did, when, when did that when, when did that start? Ha- your your history buff. When in well, America did we um, the seventies sold? It was in the seventies. <clears throat> the seventies, I was, you know, because I was just getting into weightlifting back then, and eh, you know that whole thing, and everything was protein shake, was which was odd to me because it was like put milk in a blender, and then add this chocolate stuff. It's like so. Wait, this is just chocolate milk, <laughs> you know that that's. Right. It was like, oh, no, no. It, it was like, it looked like Ovaltine because it was like putting yeah. the Nestle Quick in there. Right, right. It was always either chocolate or vanilla or strawberry. And uh, it tasted like chocolate milk that didn't taste as good because, you know, they added no. some. <laughs> because you know, it's a protein shake. Either egg protein or back then uh, some sort of whey protein. Uh, but it was some kind then of. And they bath- add some weird sweetener to make it taste weird to cover up the protein no, it was flavor. Sugar. It was just sh- sugar. Back, oh, back then it was just sugar. Oh, yeah, it was just the whole it probably thing. tasted it was, better. It was just a milkshake. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah. That, uh, that was good. That's <laughs> like that. like, that's how the whole thing started. It's like, yeah, I work out for two hours and I, I have a big blender. Let me tell you what my protein shakes consisted of in 1973, 74. And this was geared towards people like you, fitness dudes, weightlifters. Yeah, no, by the way, folks, let, let me paint a, a bit of a picture for you. There were no big box gyms. Gyms were like when, when you guys hear me with Dr. Ben Bakikio and those kind of people, 
we were, I, Drew Pinsky and I talk about this. There were no, you couldn't go to like a 24 hour fitness or a Bally's or now they have these, um, you know, purple machines. You just put your card in, you get it. Gyms were few and far between. Um, I lived in a very tiny town where there was a weightlifting enthusiast, Joe Bonadonna. He, he was the guy that got me started, family right. friend. And he worked out and he had this little storage shed next to a garage in an apartment building. <clears throat> I don't know if they loaned it to him or rented it out to him. But when Joe turned me into this athlete, you know, I came out of that little thing. I, you know, I was a nerd kid who had nothing else to do. So I just went into that cinder block building every day. This guy turned me into, you know, this athlete that I didn't know I could be. And then everybody in town was like, Joe, can you train my kid? Hey, Joe, can I come over and Joe, Joe, Joe. So by the time I was 16 or 15, I said, Joe, what if we opened a place? And he Interesting. Goes, he goes by we do you mean me? And I said, Well, I'm 15. I don't have any money. Right. And Joe was like, Well, I don't make a lot of money either. But he looked into it. So he he had all of this equipment that was either homemade, or he bought and then had because in, in Donaldsonville, you have a lot of pipe fitters, pipe fitters or welders, right? <clears throat> so you can make anything. The first benches I worked out on were we bench pressed off of hardwood. And my shoulder blades, as I got stronger, would grind into their heart. I would always have blood. I would have to put bandages on my yeah. back. From so changing? I bleed through shirts. Right. Yeah. Because I was so into this that I didn't care how much bleeding or whatever. I was in. <clears throat> and I'm telling you all, all of this for a reason. Folks, I'm choking because I was outside doing some yard work and I have a lot of dirt. I, I just blew my nose before I started this podcast and mud came out. Um, so at any rate, um, this is all, I'm going to tell that to many too, Shannon, my turner on, you know, a guy out there working hard, that kind of yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I was doing all this stuff and I was working really hard. And um, Joe was able to get, believe it or not, the St. Joe Society, it's an Italian organization. They, they honor St. Joseph every year, kind of like uh, St. Patty gets a big honor every year. So right. the St. Joe people had this little building in town. And it was only used once a year to do the the altar. My mom was talking about on the show, you know, the the the, the altar right. where they make all the bread and they give it away. So Joe was able to get that, buy it off of them. I think he was renting it at first. He moved all of that equipment. And as, as memberships grew, he was able to buy more equipment. And I think eventually buy the building. <clears throat> but he he built out everything himself. You know, he was that kind right. of guy, you know, he'd get in there, hammer and nails, get me on the weekends. And we would just, I was happy to be there. As a matter of fact, early on, now I was like, you know, way into football and everything. I was, I was squat the building, right? Like I was way into squats and the whole thing. And, and uh, they, they started making a rule. They asked me to curtail my workout so that I wasn't squatting on Monday because that took too many of the 45s away from because on Monday, everyone likes to come in and do bench press, right? Right. And they had two bench press stations set up. Danny, could you not do your bench press on Monday? Yeah, no, it's too much. No, we can't use the 45. No, I'm trying to use a 40. Come on, I sound like your people, right? No, they, they, you do. It's, Danny, can you? I'm trying to basically do Mari, but like a lower like. No, basically, if you do the person I'm a Cajun got, gym rat. The hey. guy that's gotten Cajun more correct than anyone else was Adam Sandler when he did Waterboy. He sounded more like a Cajun than, yeah. All your Cajun people are like, come on. So, no, uh, and whenever anyone tries to do Cajun, they get it wrong. Adam Sandler kind of got it right. So they said, Vinny, no squatting on Monday because that's, you know, that's when um, everyone else is trying to use the benches. You oh, squat on Monday. So um, I would um, sometimes if I wanted to squat on Monday, I'd go before school. I'd go at four o'clock in the morning. But it was this crazy thing that we put together, a little health club, a little gym in this town. This did not exist everywhere. So, <clears throat> of course, as soon as you start working out, nutrition becomes the most important part. And back then, uh, the, the, you know, Weeder would put out these pamphlets. It, the paper looked like the same paper that a newspaper was made out of. Right. And yeah. it was like a little folder of a magazine. And, and you know, it was um, stapled or maybe that was like the string in the middle. 
Right. And we would see people like, you know, young, uh, you, you know, Mickey Hargitay, young um, uh, Steve Reeves, young Arnold Schwarzenegger, young, um, uh, um, oh God, <clears throat> Frank Zane was there. You know, you would see all these guys, you would see Sergio Olivia, all of these guys, and I would just turn the pages and look, and they would be holding up a thing sometimes, like they would be flexing their muscle and holding up a thing that said, it, it was like a bottle of Weeders protein. Mm. <clears throat> and now let me tell you what the stuff was back then. Weeder made protein. They made something called Innerjol. 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 Innerjol, y'all. It was oil. Listen to this, oh, folks. Oh, oh. It was oil, Innerjol. And it was oil you like pour in a oil. salad or you could just put it on a spoon and take it or do whatever you want. But they were into, hey, if you want to have energy, you have to take energy. You need to take fat. This was going on in the early 1970s. What kind uh, of what kind of fat was it? What kind of oil was it? I, I have no idea. It was probably, you know, some seed oil. Yeah. Um, and they I want to uh, and see if it's on Google. Uh, uh, it was spelled E N E R G O L, I think. It's been so it's been 50 years almost. Um there was a, another product, a desiccated liver. I right. chewed up more desiccated liver than, because I, I didn't like liver. Weightlifters had to eat red meat, liver, and eggs. That, that was the thing. And I could not stand liver. So I would eat liver once a week. I would just gut it down. And the rest of the time, every day, I would take desiccated liver. Did you find it, Anna? Well, there is a BP oil called Energol, but... I'm trying to find the edible one. Put, put in Hoffman. It might have been Hoffman. Put in Hoffman's Energol. Okay. There it is. Energol germ oil. So maybe it's wheat germ oil. I can't believe I remembered it was Hoffman because that was the other brand. It was Weeder and Hoffman. They were kind of all the same. Right. Thing. Hoffman Energy. Hoffman Energy still has a site. Oh, really? no, that's a, that's a, never mind. They're, they're Boilermakers. <laughs> Yeah, There's still a book, Energol Germ Oil Concentrate by Bob Hoffman from 1972. Yeah. It's out of print, but it's listed on Amazon. That's kind of amazing. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm liking this, this little walk down memory lane because this was the early stuff I took. You know, I had to have Energol. And, you know, it was wheat germ oil. And now, now that you're talking about it, I'm, I'm, it. I'm trying to find. There, here's some stuff. Uh. Somebody said, I thought it was wheat, rice germ oil, soy germ oil, and wheat germ oil. Yeah, I, it's, it's something weird, for sure. I'm putting it. But, but why wouldn't the folks just take castor oil or fish oil? Because remember how people used to do that? Because that would castor make, oil you, make you poop. Make you crap. Yeah. All right. So oh. I'm looking up uh, Hoffman's protein. I, I'm seeing yeah. it right here. From the sea. Protein from the sea. I, I, I used to take all this stuff. Yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. if you want to know. What I was doing back in the early 70s, it was working out every single day. If you read my book, I, I didn't miss a day. I was taking Energol, I was taking desiccated liver, and I was putting either Weeders or Hoffman's, uh, you know, powder. Right. So I would put the Energol in the blender. I remember that blender. We had one of those. It was like mustard yellow blender with seven speeds on it. That's right, with the buttons. Big, big glass, yep. big glass, thick glass thing. And, and you had to push those buttons hard. I would I would put the protein powder in there. I'd put a couple of raw eggs. I would put um, the protein powder always had like chocolate or vanilla, but it didn't matter if it was chocolate or vanilla. I'd put a banana in there too. Right. Because I was trying to, I was really scared. I was trying to bulk up, you know. Right. This is my early days. I didn't know, you know, I didn't know what I didn't know. I was just going by what I was told to do. You got to put the energy on. You have to have red meat every day. You have to have liver every day. You have to have eggs, as many eggs as you can get. And you have to eat tuna fish. You have to eat a lot of fish, either fish or tuna fish. I lived my life like that through, through the whole 70s. You know, I, I was just as never drank alcohol, went through high school, never touched an alcoholic beverage at all. Yeah, I yeah. talked about this on the show. Yeah. This is, you know, when people go, how do you... I was just talking to a woman earlier today. I'll tell you her name. I'm not going to say her last name. Kate. I was talking Kate and I think her husband's name. Can't read it from here. Uh, maybe Mac or Mike or something. At any rate, she went through the whole bodybuilding world. She's only 40 and she talked about, you know, I went through bodybuilding and the whole thing. 
I started telling her stuff that she did 20 years ago. And she it was almost like, how do you know all this stuff? It's like, because I was there in the 70s when they were do making the same stupid mistakes. And right. there's a reason why I'm talking about this. Right? We didn't mean to talk about this. There was a reason. Well, I'm no, I wanted this. to talk about this. If this could be protein shakes 101, I'd be right. thrilled. If no one ever asked about protein shakes ever again, it would be amazing. Right. So I, um, I, I would drink this stuff every day. I would watch what bodybuilders believed and what they did, you know, all this stuff. And if you think this stuff hasn't stopped, and whenever you go, you know, you, you'll see these, these YouTube videos of these guys that are all pumped up because they're taking steroids and they all say the same things. Hey, you need, you need carbohydrates to build muscle. Categorically wrong. Categorically wrong. Uh, you you got to eat rice. You got to have potatoes. You got to have pasta. You got to eat, you, you know, because, and I'll say, well, why? Because carbohydrates have nothing to do with muscle build. You need it for energy. And when you eat that, uh, you release insulin. And when the insulin helps you build muscles because of what? Yeah. Okay, I'm an idiot. And I know that that's bullshit. Let me tell you how wrong this is. Even when I was a kid, there was a couple of guys hanging around that took steroids. Right? And I was a kid, I was like 1213 at this time but I'm old enough to be aware. And these guys would talk about steroids back then. There were more of them in Baton Rouge. When I get to Baton Rouge and go work out, <clears throat> they were taking something called uh, Dianabol. I don't even know if it's still around. I, I bet you it's still around. It was um, by the mouth. They go, yo, bro. Uh, they didn't say bro back then. I said, brah. I take, uh, I take Dianabol. Okay. Yeah, I take Dianabol. Oh, it's uh, still around. I, I cycle on. I cycle on and I build up and I take X amount per day and I take it for three weeks and then I cycle a little higher for a week. And because you know, you got to up regulate and you got to down regulate. But then after six weeks, I go off for two weeks because you got to clear it out. You got to let your body clear it out. And I'm sitting there thinking, <laughs> bad idea. My, my dad was your high school teacher. And I remember him telling me that he just passed you just so that you wouldn't stay in school for an extra year. <laughs> and now you're now you're a pipe right. cutter down at the plant. But somehow miraculously, you know all about the body. How did that happen? By the way, Dianabol is still people, being sold and still being consumed. Much. Uh, I could tell you who made it back there. there was a company because I have this photographic memory. A company called Siba, C I B A. I remember these guys said, dude, I could sell you some Siba. I can give you the anabolic Siba. 20 <laughs> bucks for a bottle. 20 bucks. Well, you know what's funny is that it still happens because it, as recently as this is probably 2017, 2018, when I was still living in North Hollywood and working out the 24 hour fitness and Tales from the Sauna. And there was a guy, I told you this, who had a body. He looked like the Mighty Mouse cartoon right. drawing of his body. And then he had a tiny, tiny head. Right. He looked very roided up. Let's put it like his, where his like his hands couldn't touch the side of his body because it was right. like the muscles were preventing. You know what I'm saying? Like, like Hans and Franz. When like Hans and Franz, exactly. Yeah. But like he was legit built like that, and I was like, whoa. And he and I wouldn't. He Wait, was, you said Hans and Franz wasn't real? <laughs> um, he if if anybody works out at the North Hollywood 24 Hour Fitness you'll see that guy there. You know who I'm talking about. Right. He just yeah. looks like Mighty Mouse. That's all I'm going to say. And he was in the sauna carrying on about quinoa and how that's how he's built all that muscle. It's quinoa. And I was like, oh, Vinny. It's almost like, it was like, did he, does he know that I'm on the podcast? Like, is he punking me right now? Yeah. Like, I was like, the universe really delivers some yeah. fucking humdingers to me. <laughs> so like, yeah, it's quinoa. I just really bulk up with quinoa. Sometimes I'll put quinoa on a sweet potato and then sometimes I'll just have a bowl of quinoa. And then other times I'll put a quinoa on a sandwich. Like, I'm not kidding. I was like, and I, look, I know. You, okay, you're Mighty Mouse. Smart. That's why when people say to me, you know, what about so this guy on the internet? I was like, don't listen to the guy on the internet. These guys are the same dumbasses that my dad had to graduate. Right, had my, to pass just to get him out of the classroom. My dad told me one time, I'm, I, I, I remember both of the guys' names. He told me the story as a young teacher. And he, he, you know, these two seniors, they were dumb as rocks, right? And he knew both of their parents. And both of these guys were going to just go back and work for their parents' businesses. There was no way they were going to college or anything. But they had to pass my dad's class. 
you know, they have to. He was a history teacher. Yeah, my dad was a history okay. teacher. So that was my best class. This is when he was still in, in the in the classroom. So he gave these two guys one test. <laughs> and he said, Okay, take the test. Go sit back there for as long as you need. Oh, my God, use the book, use your notes. And you guys turn in one test. All you have to do is get a 70. Oh, my God, you need, both of you need a 70. One, if you guys today, together with your book with your notes. Can oh, get wait, 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 hold on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They weren't separated at the back of the room. They were able to talk to each other. Yeah. And confer on answers like a yeah. team. Yeah. Yeah. One test. They both oh, freaking frack that. doing a yeah. test together. My dad, when my dad used to tell a story, I would howl with laughter. He would go, they were back there arguing for two hours. Just or they got the book in front of them and they're still arguing over answers. They're, they're, yeah. <laughs> they <turn laughs> test in, and I can't remember, but it was somewhere near 60. Oh, so, so so two one plus one does not equal two is what you're yeah. telling so, my dad just he said I squinted really hard and somehow got it to 70 I miscounted and just got him out of it. Oh you know? my god. But you know, it's that is that thing, right? Where, I know. And then these okay. guys end up on the internet telling people about shit, they don't know what they're talking about. Well, so to bring it back around, it's interesting. I just when we were looking this stuff up, I was I found this book that's out of print that looks fascinating. You probably heard of it called Muscle USA, which is basically the story of Bob Hoffman and the manly culture of York Barbell, which is the company he founded and then realized people would take the supplements and do the things. And he right. was the he was the dude, you know, the, the, the whole history. Anna, you want to see you want me to show you something? Yeah. OK, I'm going to show you something. This won't mean anything to anyone except me. Now, I got to go off ears. OK, so, <clears throat> I'm going to show you some antiques here. This okay. is this is what I still use to work out. He's getting he's he's walking away. I can see him in the mirror. He's scooting over there. He's pick it. If you see this on YouTube, you can see Vinny's butt right now. Hey, nice ass. Oh, the oh, there it is. The York plates. He's got a York barbell plate. Look at that. Forty five pounds. That's awesome. You know, he's got to come back. Well, don't he's going to show us everything in there. No, he's coming back. He's coming back. OK. There's the York. Well, here we go. I'm such a creature of habit. There's yeah. the York York barbell plate. Yeah, 45 I'm, pounds. I'm such a creature of habit. I couldn't even wait till the show was over to re rack it. I had to go rack my weights. Um, <laughs> I was like, come on, come back. <laughs> in that corner, I have one of the old York barbell split collar bars. You can't get these anymore. They're making yeah. replicas of them now. They're not. Right. These are the made in USA NPA, you know, it, I, I have a whole it, that's what I, I still pump on with the old York barbells and plates, right? That's that's old school. Well, the, he was the dude who's who I guess first started mass marketing that to people. And it's a fascinating story. But so so weightlifter. So here's the thing. What happened then for the house frows of the 90s and beyond to now say, I got to have a protein shake. So now women have to have the protein shake well, because we grew up in a culture in the 70s of you know, whenever you saw if you find any ads of, you know, uh, Bill Pearl, Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, even probably uh, Mickey Hargitay and Steve Reeves and holding whenever you find ads of these people, um, Atlas, they're either showing you some piece of gym equipment or they're, they're flexing. And like if this is the um, yeah. you know, holding the bucket of like flexing it and, and, and holding it up, showing you right. I take this right. you know, and, and do that whole thing. <clears throat> and um, so that became synonymous with, oh, if you're working out, you must feed your muscles the shake. Right. But the shakes were very little, low quality protein. As people always say to me, which protein shake do you take? Right. And I always say none. Um, the shake I make is just and it's deleterious for me to say this. So let me just do this before I tell you what I do. What I'm getting ready to tell you can be very dangerous and it could make you very sick and kill you. You can get something called salmonella. I'm very careful in my life. I've had salmonella twice, once from doing this, 
once from eating chicken that I shouldn't have cooked. I was in college. It sat in the fridge an extra day or two uncooked. And I went, okay, let me give it a shot. What I'm getting ready to tell you folks again can cause salmonella. I'll tell you exactly how I do it. I crack real eggs into a blender, but I don't crack them right into a blender. I take a bowl that is white. So you can and, see the shell, any errant uh, shell. Yeah. And it's, it's a shallow bowl like that. So <clears throat> I crack the eggs in there. Any shell that falls in there, I can get it out. Right. Right. I'll do anywhere from five to seven or eight eggs. I'll put them uh, in the bowl. Then I'll pour them in the blender. Sometimes, not all the time, I will put one small scoop of high fat yogurt in there because it makes it extra creamy. Right. Most times I just whiz it up on a low speed. I froth them up and I just drink them down. Great. Right. Uh, two other variations I'll do to that. Sometimes I'll put a pinch of salt or one of my ultra salts in there because it, it, it adds to the flavor. It adds to the whatever the flavor of the eggs are. Or sometimes I'll do salt and just a little bit of vanilla extract. It gives it a whole different flavor. That is it. There's your vanilla protein powder. Yeah, there's my vanilla shake. So it's not cold. You could I'm put 100% cacao in there and make it a chocolate. I could. I could. I can add ice and make it more of a frothy drink. But right. I just like to guzzle them down and go to the gym. So that's that's, that's your right. protein shake if you're going to do it. But how often do you do, do that in your life? And you're a guy who we can all agree exercises a lot. Yeah, like probably um, more than the average Joe. Probably once or twice a week that'll happen. Most of the time I will make my eggs like while I'm frying three or four eggs, I'll be boiling another three or four because Serena's going to end up eating one or two and I'll have one or two or three left for myself. I always have eggs hanging. Nothing is better than eggs. It, it's got every amino acid you need. It's got everything in it. Right. Um, so there is no need for protein shake. Now, um, bald Brian, Brian Bishop, Adam mm -hmm. Carolla show. Yeah. Guy's been going through hell and back. You know, he's taking chemo all the time and the whole thing. He's always muscle wasting. Um, and he called me one time. He goes, I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm always throwing up and this and that. For a guy like that, I told him to go into a powder to try to supplement. You see, you got to understand. Because you're trying to get calories on you. You're trying right, to get protein these, these on you. Powders are meant as supplementation to a, an already good diet. It's not a meal replacement. Hear me again. It's supplement. They call it a supplement. It, not, it supplements your diet. It's not replacing anything. With Brian, I said, look, you know, in between meals, uh, I told him of a couple of good egg white proteins and or whey proteins. Whey proteins are, if you get the high quality stuff, they're pretty good. Oh, you know what? Which you've talked about in a previous podcast. You like J-Rob? J-Rob makes a good one. It's expensive. All, all, again, they make vanilla, strawberry, chocolate, and plain. You want the plain. The same with Jaro. They make all these flavors and plain. Jaro, that's you right. You want the plain. Jaro does the good whey, right? Yeah, um, they, they don't do the do, egg. They do. J. Rob both. does the egg in the way. Oh, they both they both do egg. Oh, they do. Okay. Um, there's a third company, um, called. You see, and I'm giving them free ads. I should remember the name. Bulk supplements. It's just bulksupplements.com. Bulk you okay. can find it there too. But I'm telling you, folks, you don't need this stuff. I don't have this stuff. It, there's so, no need for it unless so you're me, like Brian Bishop and you have an issue then you need to supplement what you're already doing. Maybe I'll send some to George, though, because he's going through it. Well, Brian's through it, going through it. It, it. it would be good. It would yeah. be good for him. He's doing great, by the way. Tomorrow's his last treatment on his first right. round of chemo, six weeks in chemo and radiation. George is a, is a friend of mine, but a relative of Anna's who's got... Um, he's got a GBM. Yeah. Yeah. Glioblastoma. Yeah. So, but here's the thing that, We've been sold this bill of sale and I'm the example of the house frau. So I'm not being right. condescending. I am a house frau. So I'm that person who wants to be healthy and wants my kids to be healthy and what, you know, and, and pressed for time and don't have time to do anything. And, and we've been shown over and over again through advertising, through media, when you get serious about getting healthy as a woman, you either will replace a meal with a smoothie or you'll just have the smoothie and then you maybe eat a sensible dinner. I mean, we've been told that by things like Nutrisystem and whatnot and all the diet plans. Slim Fast was the big Slim one. Slim Fast, said, that's the one I'm thinking have of. two shakes a day and a sensible yeah. meal. That was their right. whole campaign at first. And then they came out with the bars and everything else. But it used to be 
two slim fast shakes right. and then a, a sensible meal at night. I'm telling you, it's hammered into my head. Like I'll never forget that. So it took me a while to kind of peel back the paradigm, the peel back the onion of belief systems surrounding like, we don't, and early on in the podcast, I had you narrate when you make a shake, what it is. And it turned into the Vinnie energy shake in the first book. Right. And it was very illuminating because I thought you had to put protein powder in and you were like, Anna, do not put the protein powder in. So let's cut to present day now that we have all this history. And I love this. This right. is protein shake 101. Yeah. That's what we're, call yeah. this episode that. Yeah. Debbie. Protein shake 101. Tallulah, protein, protein shake, shake 101. I'm so thrilled. Anyone so now, else who I'm paying right now? Protein shake 101. Protein shake 101. So we cut to the present day. Protein shakes have not only not gone anywhere, they have proliferated like an explosion of baby rabbits of protein shakes. And so I find this keto chow thing that comes up in my site and this guy smugly smiling at me in the thing. He looks like my friend's husband who's a character actor. Um, and... Uh, I just went to the site. It looks like they're saying, hey, you put this in there, but then add some of the keto. You see, I'm not going to open it. Any well, it, it, it looks like a, a, a protein shake. And then there is different uh, like MCT oil and things like that, electrolyte drops and things like that. I don't know if this is good or not. I have no idea. I'm going to go with this. Not any, good. any time somebody says I did 100 days of eating this same processed food every day, I'm like, that scares me. Listen to what you just said. Here's, huh? Processed food. Right. Well, here's pina colada keto chow. Shall okay. we look at that one as an yeah, example? Uh, see, see if you can find the ingredients. I'm going to find the ingredients. I guarantee you, folks, Anna will be using words like erythritol or monk fruit or allulose in about three minutes. Go on, Anna. <laughs> well, first of all, the big call outs are no sugar, no gluten, which, by the way, if you say no sugar, I know legally you have to say not a low calorie food if the serving is over 35 calories. So they're not following the law right there. I've been told that. Um, no sugar, no gluten, keto friendly, no soy. And then I can't read that because the thing covers it. Okay, let's see if I can zoom this. Ingredients. You don't want me to read the nutritional serving? Yeah, do that. J j you know, give the audience that because I might use that in my rant at the so end. So the supplement, the way that they recommend recommend taking it, hold on, is with how do they recommend taking it? And see, I, I just went one step in where it says you add this and then you add yeah, you add a you add a stick of butter or you add a half half a cup a of heavy cream, of half a stick of salted butter. Because oh. in the keto chow itself, there's less than one gram of fat. So, all right. So that's so it's a protein shake, I guess, um, because the, it sounds like a fat shake, but go on. It just, well, it is once you put the butter or the cream in, the half but it, it's, of butter. it's eight grams of carbs, seven grams of dietary fiber, total sugars, less than one gram, including added sugars, zero grams, Protein, 26 grams. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Go back a little bit. Added sugar. Anna said, added, whenever you hear added sugar, whenever someone says no added sugar, that means there's already a lot of sugar. That Again, that's that's one of those terms people always say, how do I, how do no, I? No, no, but that's on the nutritional panel. You're required by law to put how right. much added sugar is there, and it's zero right, grams. But, 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 all right, but go on. But whenever they say no added sugar, that means it's already sugar. Oh, well, here's where it gets confusing because because that's we just read the ingredients. Number one, milk protein isolate, acacia gum, potassium citrate, sea salt, xanthan gum, choline L bitterate, bit, bitter trait, magnesium malate, potassium chloride, natural and artificial flavor, vitamin blend, which includes ascorbic acid, vitamin A, palmitate, D3, vitamin E acetate, niacinamide, zinc gl gluconate, decalcium pantothenate B5, ferrous gluconate iron, manganese, amino acid, chelate, or she, I don't, I don't know how to say that word. Chelate. Chelate, copper gluconate, pyridoxal 5-phosphate B6, riboflavin B2, thiamine B1, potassium iodide, 5 methyl tetrahydrofolate, folate, lutein, lycopene, D-biotin, chromium picolinate, selenium amino acid chelate, 
menaquononum K2, mal- molybdenum amino acid chelate. Did I say molybdenum right? I don't know, but um, vanadium amino acid chelate, methyl cobalamin, methyl cobalamin B12. Then bolded is. Aren't you, aren't, aren't you impressed that I know these words? No, I figured you would because you have a vitamin company. I, I, vitamin company, I yeah. figured you would correct me as I went along. Yeah. Sucralose, sunflower oil, turmeric for color. Well, they pronounced it. Oh, is it turmeric? I always say turmeric. Yeah. Turmeric for color, sunflower lecithin contains milk protein. Yeah. And, and but the sucralose is allowed to say added sugar is zero, but sucralose is Splenda, right? Yeah, sucralose is not healthy for you. Um, seed oil is in there, not healthy for you. Uh, look, I mean, this is an abomination. Oh, is it a seed oil? Oh, sunflower oil. Duh. Okay. So <clears throat> there's a lot of abominations in there. Um, they, they throw some vitamins in there. Whoop de do. Yeah, you take a vitamin pill. Um, I don't get so what you take their stuff and add it to butter. Is that what we're doing? And I mean, look, how to use add a fat source. So basically, it's so funny because <clears throat> couldn't you just have some heavy cream in your coffee and take your yeah, vitamin? Didn't, <laughs> didn't, didn't Dave Asbury already already do this. You can actually make a bulletproof coffee and dump one of my vitamins in it. Ta da. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Um, I guess. Because it has the milk protein, it's got the protein. That would be the only difference. And the sucralose? I, I don't know. It sounds like a bullshit product. Well, it's processed for sure. Yeah. And you it's know pro- how, I mean, in not know. a good way, because I mean, some processed things are fine and some are not. And um, most are not. But here's the creamy tomato basil keto chow. So it's, I guess, a savory one. I mean, let me see this. That's an interesting take. I feel like we're giving them a free ad here, folks. What we're saying is, is this, this, this stuff is not good. Just please understand that. This to me looks more interesting. This has powdered beef protein, powdered beef bone broth, powdered beef, powdered protein. tomato, basil. Like at least it's going. It doesn't have any added sucralose oh, wait, or things on. like that because it's a savory one. You always have to do the Sam Elliott challenge. Did he <laughs> say powdered beef organ yell? No, I don't think beef he did. Bone broth. Powdered. Powdered beef. Diane. Fish you dumb. Yeah. No, he never said that. He said chromium piconate. Menaquini quinoquam. Menaquinon four, seven. Methylcobalamin. You see where I'm going with this? Oh, by the way, I learned this on a on podcast. I did. I did a Saturday show with, um, uh, who, who was I doing it with? Uh, Ba, ba, ba. Um, Fry was Fry's name, Dan, Dan Fry. And I was playing the beef thing by, um, yeah. And then I started playing some of his truck ads. Uh huh. I think he did truck ads for all three companies. Oh, I'm sure he has. But they you know, cream, he, and they cream their pants to have it, Sam Elliott. Oh, as long as he's cleared from Ford, we can have him for Chevy. Oh, is he cleared from Chevy? Let's take him for Dodge. Well, Dodge had we we pulled up a Dodge and a Chevy, and I was doing that on the fly. And and, and Dan said, "Well, can they do that?" I said, "Yeah, because they weren't hiring Sam Elliott, the actor. They were just hiring his voice." Right? Well, they so wouldn't, I was wondering they wouldn't how have that done worked. the campaigns at the same time. No, that would be a conflict. But they would do nobody's allowed to do a con. Even Brian Cranston was the voice of Acura for forever. And then literally six months later, as soon as it was done, right? He was, he was four trucks. So it was like they you, all jump around. You know who, Whoever's who gonna else, pay him. You know who else used to do a lot of that was um the, the British guy who used to do lifestyles of the rich and famous. Robin Leach. Robin, Robin Leach. Leach. He did beer commercials, he did yeah. you know. Great Budweiser. Budweiser. Yeah. It's Spuds yeah. McKenzie. What are you doing today? That's right. Spuds McKenzie. Yeah, he was part of all that. Listen, I was about 12 or 13 when Spuds McKenzie came out, and I had no desire to ever drink beer, and I thought that was the cutest ad campaign. So it worked to get the young people on board. Look, today's millennials would just, their heads would explode because basically it was a commercial about bestiality with a dog. Oh, that's right. All the girls like Spuds McKenzie. Yeah, he, you know, all the bikini the babes wanted to bone Spuds McKenzie. Yeah, he was the original party animal. And, the original um, party animal. Yeah. So, folks, here's what we're going to do. I'm helping Bill out because Bill is in the middle of a big movie right now. Yeah. When this video is over with, at the end of the show, Anna and I will do a five-minute 
retrospect on Spuds McKenzie <laughs> and uh, the original party animal. So hang around for that at the end of this podcast. Did you find the YouTube videos? No, I will, though, but I don't okay. want to do it. I don't want to do well, it. In, I don't I want to finish keto chow and protein powder. And listen, I, I'm not targeting keto chow to give them an ad and I'm not targeting them to shit all over them. I just want you guys to know and understand how, if you're choosing to eat stuff like this, what's in it and what it means. That's all. That's all. Because it's as much as I'm never going to buy something like that. And I avoid the keto explosion at the grocery store. People feel like they want their thing and they're sad. And they, and at this point, Vinny, now you've been on micro for what, like a month or so. Yeah. At this point, people are going, well, damn, I missed my thing. And I've been doing it 30 days. And can I have the treat? You know what? Screw it. I'll order some keto chow and have a pina colada protein shake. And it'll, it'll feel like I'm getting a treat, but I'm not actually having a treat. Right. Right. And so it's like that, that mind game that we play with ourselves. And I like how you called it eating around food. Yeah. Yeah. Talk, tell people about eating around food. And then I want to just finish up with protein shakes. I have a couple more things. Okay. So my, my whole thing, again, this comes from 40 years of experience of dealing with people. Everyone's trying to figure out, I've always said, whenever you give people a parameter, they will always try to figure out how to get around that. It's just what we do as humans, right? It's like, you know, we write tax code. I've always said if we just charged everybody X percent for taxes, whether you're Amazon or Vinny or Anna or you guys, we all pay our 20%, 30%, whatever they want, I would be happy with that. Right. But when you become a corporation, you go, okay, you have to pay taxes. <clears throat> the first thing we do as humans and go, okay, where are the loopholes? Right. How do I get around that tax? I saw one the other day, Anna, um, I saw a thing because I'm always looking at money things. And it says if you own one of those G wagons by Mercedes, mm -hmm. you can write off the whole thing. And I was like, well, why? What? It, it was kind of a catchy headline. So I read it. It turns out any vehicle that weighs over 6,000 pounds, uh -huh. you have a business, you can say, you know, because people that have trucks, they're over 6,000 pounds, right. you can write off the entire truck. So if I bought a G wagon, I'm not douchey enough to do that. Nor do I have the $180,000 to do that. <clears throat> I can drive and just write the whole thing off. And I did the math. I wanted to say, I, you can save like $25,000 in the first year on owning it. That's a workaround. People do that kind of thing with their diet all the time. Right. Right. And what they do, oh, by the way, I looked into, hey, can I add weight to my forerunner and get it? To, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> can you put a couple of bricks in there in the, a, in the bed? Let's see. I need a rack. Put it on the truck it's scale. Weigh, rack's got to weigh about 100 pounds. I need a... Uh, <clears throat> Bonzo, get in the truck. Serena, get in the truck. We're laying Everybody, this thing down. Get that couch in here. We need that couch. I need a couch in my... So at any rate, people do exactly what I'm saying, but with diet, they'll say, can I have ice cream? Okay, I'm just no, I'll say no, you can't. Okay. But you said I can have cream. Yes, I did. And you said I can have berries. I sure did. And you're you don't like sweeteners. But you didn't really tell me not to have them. I used to tell people look, I don't like them. This is on you if you use them. Now I just tell people stay away because it's a gateway drug. Um, yeah, yeah, you can have a little <clears throat> whatever. Great. So they, they would go about putting a, a ton of cream in a cup, mixing in, you know, raspberries or something like that, pouring in some sweetener, putting it in a blender, whipping it up. You might as well have had the ice cream. And, and by the way, it's never as sating as what you wanted to eat anyway. Right. So then you go, okay, that was pretty good. But now you're off and running. Now your brain is itching, right? You gave it a little something. I think, well, you know, it almost tastes like ice cream. I wonder if I can really get it to taste like ice cream. You know what, Vinny? I know he doesn't like honey, but oh hell, what the hell it was around in the Paleolithic era? Uh, let me throw a little honey in there, right? And throw a little honey, and whip it up again. Ooh, honey, taste this. It's starting to taste more like ice cream. <laughs> now you're doing that, right? And then the next time you do it, the honey just becomes normal. The next time you do it, and then you just start going. It's not scratching the same itch. I'm going to have that. And then you have the ice cream anyway. So the thing you were going to have to try to stop you from having the other thing you end up having anyway. Right. Right. So it's almost like telling alcoholics, let, let's say you were an alcoholic and your thing was beer. 
right? So besides getting rid of the feeling of what alcohol does to your brain and to your body and everything else, you also you're accustomed to the taste of beer. On day one of Alcoholics Anonymous, you don't hand that guy a near beer. Do they still call it near beer or yeah, alcohol so. beer or, or whatever? Jose or whatever. Yeah. It, exactly. It's like don't give them something that tastes almost identical to that because their brain is itching. They want to go there. Don't give them reason to go there. Right? Don't take your friend who's really over to a bar. Right. You know, eventually they're going to they're going to cave. Right? I have friends that have been clean for 20 years, and they'll say to me, like, man, just, I, I can't smell it, because if I smell it, I'm, I'm gonna want it. Right? Yeah, totally. Same with food, right? You, you have to know your own limits. And sometimes you don't know it till you mess around a little bit. And then you go hold on. And you know, by the way, don't lie to yourselves, you know, I have been making the berries with heavy cream and eating it until I feel so full, I'm gonna burst for three weeks in a row. And I'm plateauing, you know, yeah, just admit it. To, and it's okay. And go, okay, Anna, what have I been doing to fill that hole? You know what I mean? Like, or what can I do to not do it that you know what I mean? That way. But I, and I'm going to say this too, because when you're talking about eating around things, I really relate to this protein shake conversation, because I feel like I was that way. Like, if you're going to get serious about your diet, you stop eating any food other than a salad, and you have a protein shake. And you mix it up and like the isogenics and the, I could name a million of these pro even like Met Rex. Remember that Met Rex, Met Rex. <laughs> um, even, even the skincare companies come out with their own protein shakes. And I'm like, why? Cause they're like, it'll give you better skin or beach body. That's a big one. That was a, a few years ago. Pink drink. We're asked, Ooh, pink, and drink. pink drink. Like, and we're asked about this stuff all the time. And, and it's funny because usually you drink the protein shake and you are starving an hour later. Right. Right. Cause you didn't eat any real food. You didn't get full. And then you think something's wrong with you because you're literally starving. Yeah. And then you go overeat anyway. And so why not just eat some real food? And like you said, if you need to supplement for a reason, add some protein powder into stick into things. But it's not necessary. So I, have, I just like that you have the final word on all this. I had a girlfriend. Um, back in the 90s. And, you know, she was into fitness, we, we used to mountain bike together. And we, we met through fitness, right? And mountain bike and the whole thing. And uh, she, she, you know, she was into Metrex, Metrex bars, right? And I'll never forget, these bars were about, about that long, and they, they were about a half an inch thick, and they were long. And a, a whole bar was considered a serving. Like you were supposed to replace a whole meal with that big bar. Yeah, that, that, that was that just a, no, it was just supplemental because you oh. need extra protein. And I was like, okay. And I remember more than once, I probably ate them. I probably had maybe over the course of time, I'm going to say eight or 10, but it wasn't like a common thing. Usually we were out camping or something like that. I was, right. I was rock climbing it was back in those days. And I would just fall prey to, oh, just hand me one. But I'll never forget. This is supposed to be a protein bar. And the first thing that happens when you bite into it is it's the sweetest thing I've ever tasted. It was like a Snickers yeah. bar was less sweet yeah. than what was supposed to be a protein bar. Mm -hmm. right? And she had the, the powder, the Metrex powder. Every morning, I, you know, I'd hear her in the kitchen, you know, just. You know, and that's what food. we were told. Put the banana and the Metrex and the. It, it tasted like water. ice cream. It was like, I, I was like, do you really think you're doing good there? This is engineered. It's like, yeah, it's engineered. I'm, folks, if you can't see me, I'm doing a whack off sign in the camera. <laughs> hey, yeah, it's engineered. Yeah, I got you engineering right here. You know, it, it's just this crazy thing, folks. There is no free lunch. There is no shortcut, right? I'm telling you guys the shortcut. I'm telling you how to do it. Eat real food. Right? And I'm going to leave you with this because a lot of times people heard this early on in the show and I haven't talked about it. The same goes for people who run, you know, the, the, you know, you want to talk about good intentions being stolen. Someone might go, you know, I've been running 5Ks, I ran a couple of 10Ks, I think I want to run a marathon. And they'll go out and they'll get you know, better pair of shoes because they're getting more serious. They'll get the hooker one ones or the um, what do I wear the uh, the big wide toe shoe. I don't even know what they call lone peak. I don't even know what they're called. At any rate, 
they'll go get the nice shoes. And then they'll, you know, now you see all the stuff online. It used to be you go out and get Runner's World magazine. Now you get outside online and you get all the stuff. And all the ads tells you, oh, you need to eat, you know, shot blocks, goo, right? you know, um, uh, hammer nutrition, hammer gel, hammer sustained energy. Hammer. That's another it, one. It's another one. It's all sugar. I, I know the guys that started that company. I was around when that was all getting, it was hammer nutrition. It was two companies. It was, it was, um, uh, e block, e, e, e caps and hammer nutrition. It's all crap. It's all crap. And, and athletes take that stuff as if their life depends on it. You know, um, hammer nutrition packaging looks like it's packaging for like manufacturing oil. <laughs> oh, it's um, I'm telling you, uh, it's scary. And as a matter of fact, they had a guy, you know, they, they, they would send out a big, you know, if you started buying their products, they would send out a big book, you know, like a real shiny, you know, so you could see their catalog. And they had this guy, they called him Dr. Bill. It's like Dr. Bill says it was Dr. Bill's corner. And he left the company for a while. And then they brought him back because he wasn't even a real doctor. He got like a PhD online or something, and they called him doctor something. It's incredible the lies that these companies and look, you got to hear this ingredient list. You're going to die. What are we looking at? Which product? Hammer nutrition, hammer gel. Yeah, it's nothing but this is the apple cinnamon. But they have banana, chocolate, espresso, huckleberry, nochola, orange, peanut butter, peanut butter, chocolate, raspberry, tropical, and vanilla. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. want me to read it one in particular that you think will be less? No, they're going to all just, just pick one and, and okay. read Okay, apple cinnamon was the first one that came out. This is 1.7 tablespoons, not even two tablespoons. This is a serving size, folks. It comes right. in a little Mylar pack or something, maybe. Yeah, Mylar pack, or you can pour it from the giant thing. Yeah. Oh, espresso at least has 50 milligrams of caffeine. <laughs> okay, j just read one of them. Okay, here's apple cinnamon. No fat, no protein. Carbohydrate, 22 grams. Dietary fiber, zero grams. Total sugars, two grams. Added sugar, zero grams. So hold on. It has 22 grams of total carbohydrate. Which, which comes from, by the way, maltodextrin, which is sugar. Right. Right. It's 100% sugar. I know the product. I know the but, company. But how can it say 22 grams of total because carbohydrate, to, zero, two, and zero? Where's the other 20 grams? Right. They get to lie. And by the way, folks, let me do a little math for you. How many ounces is, is in there? Uh, it's 1.7 tablespoons, which equals 33 grams. Okay. How many ounces is that? 33 grams is what in ounces? 1.5 1, 1. ounces? 1.5 1. 1. ounces, let's say. Yeah. Okay. 1.5 ounces. They have as much sugar and 1.5 ounces as a half a can of Coke. A Coke has 30, not more than a half a can. But of they Coke. would tell you they're using it for uh, energy boost in the middle of exercise. Right. If you drank a half a Coke, and by the Just way, drink a Coke. When, when you're out using this stuff, I used to get sick on this kind of stuff and race. Oh, it. no, 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 Vinny. No, easy to digest, no GI distress. Oh, yeah, okay. It, because they say that that's the truth, right? Try to go 10, 12 these hours on the shit and watch what happens. You're going to crap your pants. You're going to start throwing up. Take it from me and every other ultra athlete. That's what happens. I'll get Tony Patera on this podcast tomorrow. This is what happens. Oh, yeah. Okay, let me read this. Because it's not just maltodextrin, although you are correct. That is the first ingredient. Second ingredient, water. Apple juice concentrate. That's another sugar. Mm-hmm. Something called Energy Smart registered trademark, which consists of grape juice and rice dextrin. So that's two more kinds of sugar. So, so far, we're up to that's, four that's kinds how, of that's sugar. How, that's how they hide the sugar. Go on. That's four kinds of sugar. Cultured dextrose. Five sugar. Five kinds of sugar. Then the rest is cinnamon, ascorbic acid, vanilla extract, malic acid, potassium carbonate, salt, and then four amino acids. Okay, so this so it has five oh, kinds of sugar in it. Let me explain something that you might not know. This is one of the lies companies get to do. The reason they put five different sugars in there is because if you keep the sugar content below a certain amount, you can count it as zero, right? So when you add up five different sugars, that's under that amount, you could call them all zero and you end up with net two sugars. But it's actually because you have to tell the truth at some point is 22 grams of sugar. It's more than a half a Coke. It's about seven and a half ounces of Coke. 
a, co- a, a can of Coke. So you're saying just get a little one of those of mini sugar. cans of Coke instead. It, yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's and you probably thing. wouldn't poop your pants. I, as much I, I would tell you, I would tell you this. Don't do either one. But it's the same as drinking a fucking Coke. And by the way, athletes need to take three of these per hour. So I would say I would bet. And this is just a hypothesis. You would not crap your pants if you used Coke in the same way. I don't because know. the maltodextrin disagrees with your stomach. I, I, I have no idea. That's my hypothesis. If anybody wants to try this out, be my guest. So, folks, if you think I make this stuff up as I go, I don't. Um, before we cut the video off, folks, Anna Vocino has some seasonings out. I tried the first one last night. It was the barbecue, and I did not put it on meat. Well, you I did. Put it on, I put it on salmon. Yeah. I put it on fish. Yeah. Oh, let, let me go back. I didn't put it on anything. Serena put it on fish. <laughs> you, didn't and, you didn't touch anything in the kitchen. And I was working in my office. I, I ate at about 830. I was finishing up podcast. So she she, you know, she just, you know, bounce, you know, she hits the, the ceiling, the floor, and it's my ceiling here in the basement. Right. So that means it's time for me to go up. <laughs> Chow's go. on. So I went up, the plate was already made for me. And I brought it down here. I started eating. And I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be Serena's normal, you know, black pepper, low cayenne, low salt, the whole thing. I started eating it. I said, oh, my God, that's pretty good. What is this? And I, just, I ate the whole thing. I went upstairs. God is my witness. I said, honey, that's the best salmon you've ever done. No, you what didn't did, say that. I said, what did you do? Because it didn't taste like barbecue on the salmon. Right. It gave it a different nuance. I, I did not know it was barbecue sauce, uh, rub on salmon. I said, what did you do different? And the cam was sitting right there. She goes, Anna's, a- Anna's barbecue. I went, on fish? She goes, you just came up and said it was the best fish you ever had. It is really, best I'm fish. telling you, the barbecue dust is like, I designed it specifically so that all the flavors, when you heat them up, taste amazing. And no, it's not, it's not barbecue in the sense of like sweet barbecue sauce. It's not, it's barbecue in the sense that you'll use fire and heat to activate yeah. it. And uh, tomorrow, I will be trying the, uh, I'm doing my um, shell. Taco tacos. Seasoning. Yeah, I'm going to do a pound of beef and uh, I'm using your recipe and Great. I'll see how much. So I'm going to put the taco seasoning on that. I have not tried the dill stuff yet. You'll love it. Um, but I'm you sure. You could also, if you're ever uh, barbecuing or roasting chicken, because I, I put the barbecue dust all over chicken. Obviously, that's great. You can, uh, if you have like a bunch of chicken thighs and you just want to grill them, cover them with the dill and it's like a ranchy kind of chicken. It's really good. Let me tell you what I'm going to do with it first. All right. You tell me. All right. I have uh, three packets. It, 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 they just showed up in the first today. Three, three, ten, three things of um, creme fraiche. Great. I'm going to take a whole creme fraiche. I'm going to dump it in a bowl. Hang with me, Anna. Oh, you, with me. you already sold me. I'm going to add the desired amount. I'm going to add a little extra salt because that's, that's where I live. I love my salt. And you ready for this? I'm going to chop up real fine jalapenos. Okay. Okay. I'm taking it to a different. I, I'm, I'm being moved by the Lord right now. Different level. Now, here's the thing. I don't know when I'm going to put it on yet, but I looked at that. Out the bowl. And I opened it up. I opened it up and I smelled it. So and sick. I went, you know what this needs? This needs dairy and cayenne. <laughs> Can you see Sam Elliott saying that? <clears throat> Dairy and cayenne and the dill and dill. Go to anavacino.com. Get some. My only prediction is that you're not going to need the extra salt because I, I seasoned oh, all the them. salt. All right. You know what my pet peeve is, is when you buy taco seasoning oh, and, and you put it on the meat and you're like, did they not put salt in this? And you read the ingredients. There's no salt. in it. I'm like, so what is the point? Okay. I'll, I'll test it out. I'm going to test finger it out. And tell me because finger dip it first. Finger dip it first, I'm but a, um, I'm going to finger it. Really I wanted to say something real quick before we, I talk about Villa Capelli and just a reminder, Vinny and I are going to be at KetoCon on Friday, July 8th and Friday, July 8th only. Please get your tickets. KetoCon has given us, given us an extra discount. If you use the discount code Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E, you will get 50 bucks off of the all weekend pass. And yeah. 
it gained you entry into the thing. And then I also want to say too, if you had your ticket for the 2021 that got punted because of COVID, you will have already automatically received an email to register for your current ticket for this. If you haven't reach out to the KetoCon people, they'll make it right. It's better to do it now than to try to go at the door and fix it. So if, if you have your, if you had a ticket, make sure it gets transferred over and you're ready to go. But if you don't have a ticket, get your ticket and we're doing carbs play hashtag carbs play. We are wearing costumes I don't care if you dress up like a piece of bacon. I don't care if you dress up like Vinny circa the Oprah show with pink jeans and a black shirt and a mullet. I don't care if you wear, uh, if you dress up like a, a grain of quinoa and you want to be. Uh, that would enemy. probably win. right? Yeah, there. If you're yeah. ballsy enough to dress up like a bowl of sugar or quinoa, you're yeah, going to win. You win. Um, Anna, I'm looking forward to it. I wish, and um, I, I'm going to apologize up front. The, the 50, percent discount is for when you buy the three days, $50 and discount, $50 discount, $50 discount. Yeah. $50 discount. Yeah. And then I will only be there on Friday, I have to be in Lone Pine, California for the bad water 135 race that yeah. my company ultra salt and ultra fat sponsors. So I need to be there that day, I'm going to do the stay thing, the Q and A. And then after the Q and A, I'm literally getting in my car, it's going to already be packed. And I, I have to be in El Paso that night so that I can, you know, I'm driving and so that I can be in uh, California the next day. For Lauren and I have to be in Atlanta the next day, but we are going to yeah. be there later that night, turns out. So we will be around a little bit, Lauren and I will. So definitely you hang know, out. Here's the thing. Anna and I are very important people. We can't stay the entire weekend. We have other gigs. <laughs> so it works. Very important people. By the way, Anna, besides- nothing her, out of this podcast. You need to know we're very important people. We're E-list celebrities. Um, Anna, um, yeah. here's the thing. Uh, you also have Eat Happy Kitchen where they can yeah. find those rubs. They can also get all your gravies over there. Most of you guys Absolutely. call them sauces. Um, go to Eat Happy Kitchen. If you don't know what to do and you're stuck with cooking, you want to get Anna's two books, Eat Happy and Eat Happy 2, T-O-O. -O. Go get those two books. You're going to love them. We cook out of them all the time here. You're going to have to add your own recipe of doing salmon with your own rub. Yeah. 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 I'm going to do that. Yeah. Call it Vinny's rub. Yeah, Vinny's rub. <clears throat> so uh, go check that out. For me, you know what to do. We all go shopping on Amazon. Before you go to Amazon, please go to VinnyTotters.com. Click through the banner. It puts coal on the fire. It gets my train down the track. We also have a super fan page. It's kind of like PBS. You go there, you give us a couple of bucks, and we can keep the show free. Now, uh, if you're watching this on video, please go over to um, iTunes to hear the rest because we're going to do a little Spuds McKenzie extra. Real here. quick, so, before yeah. you do that, I just want to say we haven't talked about Villa Capelli. I need to talk about that for one minute. Oh, go on. Um, today is the three year anniversary of losing Paul Capelli. That's hard to believe. That's I know, isn't that believe. crazy? Uh. And but it's here's the thing. Here's the thing. Stephen Crutchfield, his husband, his widower, is running the thing like gangbusters. Go get Villa Capelli olive oil. It is the best olive oil on the planet. We talked about the olive oil thing at at length in the NSNG 101 Q and A we did on Instagram last night. Yeah. Go back and listen to that. You'll get all the detail on olive oil. Go get Villa Capelli olive oil. I promise you, you're going to use it every single day. It's the best tasting olive oil. And especially if you've only ever had grocery store olive oil, this is going to really like awaken your, your senses. And you're going to be awakening your taste buds anyway from making this change and cutting out the processed foods. You're going to be so thrilled that food actually tastes good. Fresh food tastes amazing. And Villa Capelli brings out those flavors and vegetables. You can fry your meats in it. It's great. If you want to get your hands on Villa Capelli, go to villacapelli.com or you can click through the banner ad at vinnytortorich.com. But make sure you use the discount code Vinny at checkout, V-I-N-N-I-E, and you'll get 10% off your order each and every time. Now, Stephen has put in a mechanism where you get free shipping on orders over $100. So the trick is you want to get your cart to be over. So get some of their salts, seasonings. They have a grilling seasoning that's great. Yeah. Get their stuff, use the discount code, and then so it's high enough that you get the free shipping. That's what I would do. And I see y'all when you shop at Eat Happy Kitchen too. That's why I can tell you're smart because you get the free shipping. It's not easy to do free shipping when you're shipping something as heavy as olive oil, but he does it for the $100 purchases. So yeah, yeah, let, me tell you, them. let me tell you what I'm getting ready to do. I'm getting two three liter tens because think That's about how that. You do it. That's how you you know, people go, oh, Mr. Hardy Tardy buying close to $200. No, 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 no. Number one, 
I won't have to do it again forever. Right. I'll, I'll have the oil. And number two, I'm, I'm saving so much because that's so much weight. Think of six liters of, of oil where that right. weighs. It's right. going to be for free. Six liters of petrol. Yeah, petrol. It just shows up for free. Yeah. And um, so it's better than Energol. I'm, I don't put Energol on your salad. Look, I still do Energol. I do Villa Capelli as my new Energol. Well, it's, there you go. It's the know, new Energol for a look, new generation. If, if you think I'm kidding, I, I've never gone away from running on oil. Uh, you guys, if you heard podcasts like four or five years ago, when I first started kayaking out in the ocean, I needed something quick and easy. Because when you're in a, a, a very, you know, fast sea kayak, they can tip over. So I figured out I can get these little glass vials in my um, in my um, safety vest, in my life vest. And what I would do is I would just hold myself in the water while the swells were coming, I would open one and just drink it down. I would put Villa Capelli with some of my ultra salt. It tasted like a salad caprese. And I just ran all day on oil out there and it works like a charm. So go um, promo code Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E for 10% um, off, free shipping over $100 total. Are right, we going to cut this off and do a little yeah. spice McKenzie?